What's up my friends? This is my review of the Adidas Adazero Boston 12. Now this video is a collaboration between me and Roadrunner Sports and Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me the Boston 12 for the purpose of review. However, they're not going to get a chance to see this video before you do and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. Now the Boston is a much loved series. How have they done with version 12? Let's get into it. Let's get started with price. The Adidas Boston 12 will cost you $160. And of course, I will place links in the show notes below in case you want to pick up a pair for yourself. Adidas has increased the stack height over the Boston 10 and 11, and we now have 38 millimeters in the heel, 31 in the forefoot for a seven millimeter drop. Adidas claims that a US men's size nine would tip the scale at 9.5 ounces or 269 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, it tips the scale at 11 ounces even, or 312 grams. So right off the bat, when I saw that 312 grams, I was, I was immediately happy with the shoe. Oftentimes for a shoe like this, and I consider this to be a daily trainer that possibly could work for some up-tempo work. A lot of times I see the weight creeping up towards the 350 grams in my size. So for me, 312 grams is a good place to start. Now, before we talk about materials, let's talk about sizing because I did find that the Adidas Boston 12 fit me true to size. However, and this is important for me to get across to you is that I have narrow feet and I did find that I had a little bit of pressure here on my little toe. So that tells me that the toe box in the Boston 12 is probably not the roomiest out there. So if you have wide feet, this may not work for you. However, everything else fit fairly well I had a good midfoot lockdown we'll talk about why in just a second and although I did feel a little loose in the heel I didn't have any heel slip but let's start at the top let's work our way down now the Boston 12 does have some race inspired stylings we don't have that overly plush heel collar got a very thin top to the heel collar and then we have a bolster that comes around the lateral side and the medial side there is no padding right on the back of the heel as far as the heel counter goes it's fairly rigid and fairly thin you can actually feel it if you start manipulating the back of the heel you can feel how thin it is running from the midsole about two inches up the heel and of course we do have this little suede pull tab that folds down when you're not using it and because this is kind of a race inspired fit it's a little tight for me to get my foot in I did find myself using this pull tab on a regular basis the upper is a very lightweight mesh and that makes the shoe extremely breathable in my time testing this shoe I've been using it in very warm conditions and my feet haven't felt overheated at any time now there are just a few overlays to give a little more structure to the upper of course I'm TPU branding for the stripes, a little piece here on the heel, the standard overlays coming down the eyelet chain, and then we've got this toe bumper right around the front. And this is here just to give your toes a little protection and to keep the upper off the top of your foot. Now this overlay, this toe bumper, didn't keep the upper off my feet completely. Because if I hold it up and you see, you see right there, you can see a little discoloration. That's actually where my big toe was hitting the inside of the upper and it's worn away some of the coloring on the inside of the mesh. Now, I don't know if this happens to you. This hasn't happened to me in several years where my toe is actually worn through the upper, but all this damage happened on my very first run in these shoes. Now I should tell you that my first run in these shoes was 17 miles, so I did take it out for quite a while to test it out on my first run, and it didn't seem to get any worse after my subsequent runs. So I want you to take it with a pinch of salt. I also want to remind you that when people are telling you, reviewers like me, about the experience in a certain shoe, remember that these are the thoughts and opinions of the individual. So just because this happened to me, just because my big toe started wearing away at the upper, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen to you. In fact, I haven't heard of it happening to any one else so early but it is what it is now as far as the tongue goes adidas again is sticking to a kind of race inspired design it is certainly very thin it's almost like a felt very similar to the adios 8 except there is just a slightly more padding now we do have a lace loop right here in the middle but the tongue is not gusseted now if you kind of take a peek down the side of the tongue you're going to see a midfoot band which kind of looks like the tongue is gusseted but it's not that midfoot band actually holds on to these black lace loops right here. So when you tighten down the laces, it puts a little bit of pressure on that midfoot band and just tightens it up. And because of that, I actually had a lovely midfoot lockdown. In fact, the midfoot lockdown of the Boston 12 was my favorite part of the shoe in how it fit my foot. All right, let's come down to the midsole because a lot of the magic is happening in the Boston 12 in the midsole. Adidas is using a dual density setup. And it's very easy to see on my pair because the foams are different colors. We have Light Strike 2.0 in the heel and that's this white foam. And then we have Light Strike Pro starting with a thin layer in the heel and then thickening up to being almost all Light Strike Pro here in the forefoot. Now the Light Strike 2.0 in the heel is an EVA and it's been tweaked from previous versions. It's now lighter and a little softer. Now this would be a good place to tell you that the last Boston I ran in was the Boston 10. I didn't run in the Boston 11 and I found the Boston 10 to be very firm. The Boston 12 on the other hand, I wouldn't call this a plush shoe, but in comparison to the Boston 10, it's a much softer ride, especially when I'm running easy and I'm heel striking a little more. The Light Strike Pro on the forefoot is their premium foam. It's a PIBA formulation and it's very light and very responsive. And you can certainly feel that when you get up on your toes a little more when you start picking up the pace. Now sandwiched in between this midsole foams are the Energy Rods 
2.0. Now these energy rods 2.0, which you can see through the little window in the bottom, they're made of glass fiber and they kind of splay out and they follow the metatarsals of your foot. But because this is 2.0, you can actually see this little bit right here on the side. And this little extra addition to the energy rods just helps provide a little support. Now, as far as the ride of the Boston 12 goes, because I had run in the Boston 10 and I had experienced the firmness of the Boston 10, when I immediately compared the Boston 12 to the Boston 10, this felt very soft. It felt a lot more welcoming. And I think ultimately Adidas is onto a good thing by making the ride a little more forgiving. I think they're also opening the shoe up to be used for a lot more types of runs. Now, even though we do have the energy rods, I can't actually say that I noticed a performance benefit from having the energy rods in the midsole. Now, that's not to say that I wouldn't notice it if I had a pair of Boston 12s without them, but what I mean is I didn't notice any particular extra kick from having the energy rods. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I know the Boston 12 is sort of marketed as a mid to long range shoe, and I would agree with that. And I've heard some reviewers say that the Boston 12 works well for intervals. So in my opinion and in my experience, there are probably better options out there if you're trying to run fast in a shoe. For example, the Adios 8. If you're looking for a shoe to run faster in, I think that is lighter and it feels a little more snappy. I think the Boston 12 is situated firmly in kind of a lightweight daily trainer. At least that is how I will use this shoe moving forward. I think this shoe feels very good when I'm running easy, even up to some moderate paces. And then because we do have the Light Strike Pro in the forefoot and the energy rods, which I actually think the energy rods just give a little more support to the midsole rather than actually forward propulsion. But because we've got them in the midsole, I think it's going to lend itself to maybe doing strides at the end of some of your easy runs. But all in all, I do recommend this shoe for a mid to long distance runs. I think if you had this shoe and you wanted to run a marathon in it, I think it would be protective enough and I think it would suit a lot of people. I think there are probably better options out there for racing or at least a shoe that feels a lot faster. And obviously Adidas knows this because they have the Adios Pro 3. And this would actually be a great training edition if you did have the Adios Pro 3. Briefly coming down to the outside, we got a lot of coverage, a lot of continental rubber coverage, and this provides excellent grip. Didn't experience any issues with slipping, even when I was running on wet pavement. I wouldn't recommend this for any sort of trail activity. I mean, it is a road shoe. Again, there are just better options out there. And we do have quite a bit of rubber coverage on each side of the heel. And when I look at it, I am noticing a little bit of wear already on my lateral heel area. But at least for me, that is to be expected. When I run easy in a shoe, I do tend to heel strike a little more. But all in all, the amount of wear on the outsole of my Boston 12s seems pretty normal for the amount of volume that I put in. I'm not sure how well you can see this on camera, but I do have quite a bit of creasing on the midsole. But again, totally normal, totally to be expected. The midsole creasing isn't going to take away from any performance attributes of the shoe. So to wrap it all up, this is going to be a daily trainer that you can pick up the pace in. It's going to be especially well suited if you don't like an overly plush hopper. I think this lightweight mesh is actually pretty ideal, especially if you're running in warmer temperatures or you tend to run hot. As I already said, the forefoot fits a little narrow and for me at least the heel fits a little wide. Again, I didn't have any heel slip, but it did just feel a little loose. This feeling of looseness in my heel didn't seem to bother me at all when I was running. It's more when I stopped or when I put on my shoes before I started running, it was noticeable. But I think maybe I'm a little over analytical when it comes to shoes because I'm really thinking about every part of the shoes and how they feel on my foot. Oh, by the way, the upper in the Boston 12 is made with at least 50% recycled materials and Adidas is always on their quest to end plastic waste. So that's pretty fantastic. All right, guys, your turn. I want to hear from you. Have you ever run in a Boston? Do you have or are you thinking about getting the Boston 12? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments. And with that, my name is Matt B. This has been my review of the Adidas Adazero Boston 12. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.